This program is brought to you by UCKG. Hello everyone and welcome to the last hit program. We are here together again with you. Because you are not alone. You are not alone in your fight. You are not alone in a war against addictions. It came, it entered in your house, in your family, and it's bringing destruction, pain, suffering, tears. Or maybe there are no more tears to cry. But my dear friend, I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. And we are here to help you to find the way out for your trouble, for your problem. You can call us on 0296-0298-37 and speak with one of our pastors right now who is here ready to speak to you, to give you some sort of guidance, to pray for you, to guide you so that you will, my dear friend, overcome this challenge. Call us now. We're going to be watching a testimony and we'll be back straight after this testimony. I pretended like it was a normal day. I got up. I went to school. I went back home. And went to the roof of my building. My right foot was already floating over the edge. But right before I was about to leap, I saw a family across the street looking at me from their apartment window. This little girl was staring at me and she shook her head and covered her face. It was because of her that I didn't jump. You just heard the testimony of a 20-year-old who arrived at the brink of suicide and changed his mind. Why would someone with a whole life ahead of them decide to end it all? While depression can be physically crippling, it is also extremely spiritually destructive. Depression spiritually opens up your soul to many evil works. Despair, continuous sadness, anguish, suffering, loneliness, feelings of abandonment, and suicide are all internet searches that have increased dramatically in recent years. As time goes by, hurtful events accumulate inside the soul, and there comes a time when there is no more hope. Then there is no more room for life, and there is only one thought. I don't want to live anymore. When I was uh, about 16, um, I, I had a, a girlfriend, and um, like uh, I was just uh, very jealous. Uh, so, um, uh, one day, um, like my dad was speaking bad about her and I pulled out like a knife on him. So I got arrested and took into jail. When I was in the juvenile home, that's when, um, I met like, uh, people I started talking about drugs and stuff. So when I got out, I, I started trying, uh, drugs myself. Well, I started smoking marijuana, then uh, drinking alcohol and started trying other drugs, uh, and uh, because of that, I could never keep a stable job or uh, I would never be able to focus in school. This addiction, it was pretty, pretty bad because uh, I felt like everywhere I needed to go, I felt like I needed to be on uh, some type of substance so that I could act natural, so I could, I could be relaxed. But instead it was uh, causing more problems and more addiction. And if I didn't, I have money from like my own paycheck, um, then I would start selling my clothes or I would steal money from like my parents' wallet or, or their bag. The worst thing that happened to me was um, I was, I got blacked out drunk and um, I was, uh, I was arguing with my, my dad uh, and uh, I, uh, I just stormed off into the streets, took a bus and started uh, just walking around the city. And um, because I was so high, I, I stole some alcohol from a store, from like a regular like convenience store. And I started just uh, sitting in the parking lot drinking. And next thing you know, next thing I know, I woke up um, in the hospital. In the hospital, uh, they were pumping alcohol out of my stomach because I was so intoxicated, they thought I was, I was trying to kill myself. Well, I came to the Universal Church, um, because my grandma was uh, was a firm member for 29 years, 
I started coming. It wasn't easy at first because I would um I wouldn't like what the pastor was saying or um I was still in my own uh, in my own mind. I still thought it was okay to drink and to smoke marijuana as long as I was coming to church. Um, but then it was when I started giving my life to God that my life started changing. I started uh, attending the Friday services for deliverance. And um, once the pastors started um, with the strong prayers, um, I remember just feeling uh, very nauseous, but it wasn't till the strong prayer that I realized, okay, this problem is spiritual. And if I opened up myself to God, then he, uh, he could free me from these problems that I was having. Well, after being delivered, um, I, I just felt this, this heat run through my body, um, this like, um, this like burning sensation, but um, I was feeling lighter. My body was feeling physically lighter. After the deliverance, uh, I didn't want to drink anymore. Um, the anger stopped. My behavior changed. Today, um, I don't have uh, that desire to uh, drink anymore, to buy alcohol. I don't have that desire to smoke marijuana. Um, I don't feel uh, excessively angry anymore. I don't have an anger problem. I would say to this person that wants to just stop drinking and wants to stop smoking, to search for God, to um, really find it, uh, to really find anything you could do to trust the Word of God and really want to change your life around. It's the strong prayers work if you open yourself up to God. You see, there is no easy way to get out of addictions. But there is a way. There is a way. It's hard. It requires effort. It, it requires sacrifice. It requires discipline, determination, perseverance. But you can be free from this problem. I want to read something with you in the Bible. A situation, a story, actually a parable that speaks about this, 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 this man who left the house of his father and he went to the world. He went to uh, live his life away from the father. Like many people are, who are watching this program right now and you are away from the house of the father. Maybe you got involved with addiction, addictions in alcohol drugs, tablets, gambling, and you miss the house of the Father. I want to read with you this passage, this parable, and I want to make a special invitation for all of you very soon. There in the book of Luke chapter 15 and verse 11, we read, Then he said, A certain man, who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Again, it is a parable, but it's the reality of many people who are watching this program right now, especially those who are living this prodigal life away from the house of the father and get involved with all sorts of bad things, there is hope for you. Let us continue reading, and I want to speak more about this. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, 
and sent him to his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have, have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Look the situation. At first, it was good, it was nice, everything was okay, but it came to a point that he found himself completely lost in want. But when he came to himself, look how interesting it is. When he came to himself, because he was out of his mind, but he came to himself. And I want to make a prayer at the end of the program for you, mother, who want your son to come back to himself. You want your daughter to come back to herself. You want your husband or you want your wife, your children to come back to their senses. Well, there was this moment when he came back. Look what happened. He said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and he and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. You see, my dear friend, how the father received his son. And this is how we will receive you this Sunday. This is how God will receive you here this Sunday. Not with judgment, but with compassion. Yes, I am speaking to you. You who are away from God. And if you are not away, send this message to someone who is away from God. And you know that he is living a life that he is not happy. Send, because I am sure that it's God calling all the prodigal sons and prodigal daughters back to his house. This Sunday, 3 p.m., you will be with us in one of our churches. We're going to have the addiction cleansing therapy and a special prayer, the prayer of the return. Yes, my dear friend, it's your opportunity. It's your chance. This is not going to be one more service. This is not going to be one more meeting. This is not going to be one more prayer. It's going to be the beginning or the return, the restart for all of you who are away from God. Yes, if you are a mother, a father, bring the picture of your son, of your daughter who is away from you, away from God. And we're going to be making a special prayer for all of them. 153 Northumberland Street in Liverpool. 125 Main Street in Blacktown. 121 Victoria Ave in Chetsu. These are the addresses of Sydney branches. And we also have in Queensland and in Melbourne. In all these churches, we are going to have this special service. 3 p.m., you are going to come join us and your life will change forever. Now it's time for us to make a prayer, a prayer for all of you. Before we make this prayer, if you'd like to check 
our, our addresses, the addresses of our church, you can go to our website, uckg.org.au, and you find the right address. Again, if you want to call us and speak with a pastor right now, 0296-0298-37. Don't hesitate to give us a call right now. Now, I want you to prepare a glass of water or a bottle, and we are going to join our faith in prayer. Prepare yourself. I've already tried the rehabs. Yes, I went to the counselor. I tried using my own willpower. I tried talking to friends. I've even tried meditation because my friend said it could help. Nothing I try is working. I just need a hand. When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. My Lord and my Father, in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray right now for all those who are watching this program. And my Lord, especially for this mother, this father who is fighting, my Lord, for a son, a daughter. I pray, my Lord, that this person who is away, that perhaps this parent doesn't know where he is, where she is. I pray that they will come back to their senses. They will come back to themselves. Yes, my Lord. Those who are lost, lost in their mind, they are confused. I pray right now for you to rebuke the spirit that is my Lord Jesus working in the life of this person. And my Father, give them the strength for them to go back home, to go back to the house of the parents and in special to the house of the Father, which will be open, my Lord, with open doors this Sunday. The door of the house of the Father will be open and the arms of the Father will be open. Yes, my Lord, to receive those who are lost they will be found and there will be joy, my Lord, in your house. There will be joy in heaven for the return of those who are lost. Yes, my Father, I pray right now for all those who are struggling with addictions. Give them strength. Those who are already doing the treatment, my Lord, every Sunday, 3 p.m., I pray that they will, my Father, receive the strength to persevere and to remain, to keep themselves clean, away from this addiction. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, for those who are sick, for those who are feeling pain right now. I pray, oh Lord, blessing the water, so that when they drink from this cup, this bottle of water, they will be energized, they will be empowered, they will be healed, they will be renewed. They will receive the refreshment for their souls. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless, I consecrate this water in whatever you are, my dear friend. You can drink in faith, receiving the refreshment, the rest for your soul and the strength for you to do what your faith is telling you to do. In Jesus' name, and those who believe and agree, you can say amen and praise God. Amen. My dear friend, I am looking forward to hear good news about you, to hear your testimony, to hear that you came back to the house of the Father and your life is transformed. So I will see you next time. God bless you all.
This program is brought to you by UCKG.